one you would have to add water to do a mixture and then you get to work but this one this one is the best okay and this one is here is the usg all-purpose um this one you'd have to add water and mix whereas the next one is already mixed so this one is just to mud inside of the bucket and also this one is uh, more of a gray or off-white finish and the next one is white so let persons know how they can get in contact with you all well you can call us here on 605-9663 Say it again. 605-9663. There you have it, folks. The best deals in town for all of your needs. Capital Lumber located on Parkgate Road. Thank you for joining us on Deals Crazy TV. I'm your host, Keyshan. And if you would like to be a part of this amazing show, please phone us at 423-9993 or 463-7491. And you can email us at fourwaysmedia at gmail.com. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition, Prime Minister Davis issues a statement on Haiti. The latest on those Abaco Shanti towns. A former NASA rocket scientist encourages students in STEM studies. And in sports, the B3A's Carifta trials underway. The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jiminita Swain, and this is the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Thanks so much for tuning in. Topping news, the government beefing up security and surveillance measures to secure and protect the country's borders in light of the escalating turmoil in Haiti. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis releasing a statement this afternoon outlining his administration's plans to safeguard our country during Haiti's crisis. Desmond Saunders tells us more. According to Prime Minister Davis, the situation in Haiti has prompted his government to now deploy significant Royal Bahamas Defense Force assets, establishing a Southern Bahamas blockade operation outfitted with surface vessels, aircraft, and 120 highly trained Defense Force personnel. The operations will also focus on the northern coast of Haiti, the Old Bahama Channel, and the Windward Passage. Davis says the Bahamas is also expanding its patrols in the southern waters and the United States and the United Kingdom and working to position assets in the region. He adds the country is working with the United States Coast Guard, the Turks and Caicos, and the Cuban Border Patrol to share critical intelligence and align its efforts. These efforts have no doubt assisted in intercepting a number of vessels originating from Haiti of late. Prime Minister Davis says the repatriation of those individuals aboard those vessels will be conducted in a manner that prioritizes the safety of our officers and respects the human dignity of the passengers. Meantime, Davis revealed that during the Summit of Americas in June 2022 in the United States, 21 countries signed an agreement that included a commitment to receive refugees. The Prime Minister says he did not sign this pledge as it is a right decision for the Bahamas. The statement adds the crisis in Haiti is complex and multi-dimensional and while formidable obstacles remain, the Bahamas is committed to continuing diplomatic support for Haitian efforts that would create a path forward out of their crisis. He's reassuring Bahamans that his government remains steadfast in protecting and defending the country's borders and acts for the prayers of the public as the turmoil escalates in Haiti. Live for the Bahamas Tonight, Desmond Saunders, back to you, Jimenita. Thanks, Desmond. This week seemed to mark a turn in Haiti's continuing crisis as the country descends into lawlessness. The prime minister resigned and one gang leader issued a warning to outsiders. We spoke with the national security minister on the international community's role in assisting Haiti. Vaughn Albury has that. 
Prime Minister Davis' statement issued March 16th reads, we are now deploying significant Royal Bahamas Defense Force assets and 120 highly trained personnel to patrol the northern coast of Haiti. Haiti continues to spiral, and Haitian gang leader Jimmy Barbecue Theresia issued an ominous statement this week, rejecting plans by the international community, including CARICOM, for a transitional council made up of Haiti's political parties to return law and order there. The former police officer is sanctioned by the United Nations and called for the resignation of Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who has led Haiti since 2021. He reportedly resigned March 10th. Now, as plans for the deployment of an international force to stable Haiti, Theresia said it is not just people with guns who have damaged the country, but politicians too. Minister of National Security, the Honorable Wayne Monroe noted collaboration with regional partners to enforce a naval blockade. We cooperate with our neighbors, the, the Cuban Border Patrol, the, the officials in Turks and Caicos, the U.S. Coast Guard, Fort Division. We uh, cooperate with them, we deploy our vessels, and the results speak for themselves. Here is his response to the gang leader's warning about foreign forces entering Haiti. Odd thing is, if you listen to the CARICOM statements, if you listen to everyone's statements, we all say that the solution must be a Haitian solution. They're not going to have any solution imposed upon them. That's quite clear. We're urging them to come up with a solution that's acceptable to the Haitian people. As the violence escalates, hundreds of Haitians continue to flee to escape the lawlessness, violence, and poverty there. However, many were interdicted at sea as the United States, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands naval forces strengthened their blockade to protect their national borders. For the Bahamas Tonight, I am Vaughn Albury. Thanks, Vaughn. In other news, unregulated structures are far cry from ideal homes. Take, for instance, their illegal utility connections, painting a better picture for the media. Here's what Works Minister the Honorable Clay Sweeting says his team found in the case of shantytown buildings over in Apico. 90% of the homes do not have any running water. Uh, we also discovered that in the communities there were three or four generators that were wired, uh, not up to code, and the owners of the generators would then charge um, a fee for providing electricity to the people in their community. Um, they would uh, provide electricity from 8 till 6 in the morning for a, a, a standard rate. So in Abaco, there was no allocation for um, utilities there. Um, that was one of the biggest issues. Um, here, we in New Providence, we found some situations in that regard. Um, but it seems that if there seems to be a trend where persons utilize um, and take advantage of people in these communities by providing a generator for power and then charge them as if they are the utility company. Obama's striping group of companies investing some $15 million into subcontractors, specifically in Eleuthera-based companies, as a part of its massive $100 million contract to resurface more than 160 miles of road across Eleuthera. During the signing of the deal on Friday, optimism riding high as stakeholders prepare to upgrade roads to international standards. Lloyd Allen was there. The road work we undertake will not only create jobs, but also stimulate the local economy. But we are going to be able to ride on asphalt, hot mixed roads. According to facilitators, this now opens the door for more than 160 miles of roads to be repaved. A number of companies on the island also included as a part of this project, paving the way for improved economic activity across the island. It's important as a company Bahamas Stripping Group that we just not give crumbs from the table, but give peace a pie. The signing taking place at the Rock Sound Chamber of Commerce building with the Bahamas Stripping Group of companies excited to engage Eleuthera businesses with its transformation. This decision reflects our belief in empowering and supporting local businesses 
contributing to economic growth and prosperity for our communities. By working with our local partners, we aim to create a sustainable and thriving e economy that benefits everybody. What we're doing here today in signing this $15 million is just the start. Our goal is to ensure that we can, we can give a piece of cake and those two, those two slides of cake being given out. New View and Quick Fix Construction representatives say the investment bodes well for Eleuthera. At New View Construction, we take pride in our commitment to delivering quality work. As a construction company established in South Eleuthera, we consider ourselves blessed to have the opportunity to address the issue of debilitating potholes and damage and damaged vehicles and disrupted, that's disrupted daily life for the residents of South Lutra. We are expanding and growing that it empowers us to hire people and it empowers those employees to be able to meet their needs, pay their bills, and also make the investments that they have on their hearts that they want to make. It's also going to empower our community, the whole entire island of Eleuthera. Central and South Eleuthera Member of Parliament and Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, the Honorable Clay Sweeting, says over the past two years, various projects have contributed significantly to Eleuthera's thriving economy and community. The same standing true with this recent multi-million dollar infrastructural upgrade. I know that traditionally the expectations of a Family Island MP may vary. So for me as an MP, I promise to focus on education, I promise to focus on empowerment, economic empowerment, and to provide opportunities for employment. So with this single agreement, most of these boxes are being checked. Work is expected to begin on the project sometime in April. For The Bahamas Tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. Still to come, a scientist with Bahamian roots off to space. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. More news in a moment. Fourth and fifth, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. passion to cure ailments plaguing our country, Nick Mialis back in 1993 imported 8,000 neem seeds from India with the hope of taking the agricultural sector by storm. We focus on hypertension, two preventable diseases, hypertension and diabetes. Every family, almost every family in our country, you, you see one or two of those or a combination of those preventable diseases. And we also utilize the bark of the tree, this goes into one of our tinnitures to make an extract for periodontal disease or just dental hygiene, right? Uh, all good health starts with dental hygiene. Very, very important. You see, neem is a natural herb with a wealth of health benefits, ranging from preventing dental diseases to possessing anti-aging properties when applied to the skin. Mialis lists more benefits from this extraordinary plant. The neem produces an olive-sized shape berry that we extract the oil from. And then we also get another valuable product. When we extract that oil, we get a byproduct called neem cake 
which we feed our chickens, which we'll be feeding to our sheep. It's a natural dewormer and an immune enhancer. So neem is wonderful to keep the immune system strong. Our whole goal is to contribute to our health system. You judge a country through its healthcare system. And it's all about prevention. It's all about prevention. And believe it or not, neem also has some agricultural benefits through a byproduct called neem cake. It's what's left behind after extracting neem oil from the berries. Because the neem cake has a slow releasing nitrogen. It has the potash, it has the magnesium, it has the iron, it has the calcium, the essential micronutrients. It has everything that a plant needs. We will be feeding that neem cake to our sheep, continue to put it in our chicken water. Chickens on occasion have intestinal disorders. We have a better uh, survival rate using the neem cake. In fact, Mialis believes in the neem plant so much that he makes this prediction. Neem, one day I'll make a prediction, will be part of a, part of a cure for oral cancer and prostate cancer because of its anti-inflammatory and anti-tumor properties. So after a brief talk, Mialis grabbed his wife, Daphne, and put me to work. She began with a brief demonstration. These brown leaves we'll discard. If it doesn't look 100%, we just take the whole thing and make sure that there's no particles on here that shouldn't be there. And then we're gonna just hold the stems and strip the leaf into the bin. And then once we've done that, we will put it on our drying rack. Once the leaves are dried, they're pulverized and put into their herbal supplements. Basically 500 milligrams of pure neem leaf will go into a vegetarian capsule. And this is our number one product for supporting the immune system, balancing what's out of balance in the body. It's an adaptogen. Um, so it helps in many different, um, it's multi-purpose. Abaco Neem Farm also specializes in farm-to-table experiences, has a wide variety of tropical fruit orchards, and also dabbles in beekeeping. We're told that the couple is also looking to provide lodging on the farm's property in the near future to accommodate a growing bird-watching population in the area. Keeping you in the know with Good to Grow, I'm Leah Cooper. Yellow Elder Garden, Ali and her cousins listen to Grammy share tales. The 70s so sweet, with themed costumes and dancing feet. Then came the brass, reaching new heights, a symphony of Bahamian nights. The 2000s, the Yellow Elder, a symbol of pride. Grammy's legacy in view, as Ali dances in her Yellow Elder costume. We are alive. This portion of the news is brought to you by Full Call Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. Thanks for staying with us. Doctors Hospitals Bridge to the Future STEM student program continuing today and allowing students to launch off with a very special guest, the daughter of a Bahamian who is set to actually go to space in the coming months. She encouraged students to explore careers in STEM. 80% of jobs in the future will require some sort of STEM exposure. We are becoming a more digitally connected world than ever before. Almost everybody has a phone. They're using GPS. They're using TVs. We're using microphones. All of this is STEM. And in order to be able to provide people with meaningful careers, some level of Knowledge is going to be important. Former NASA rocket scientist, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker Aisha Bo continues her mission to educate as many young people on STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and maths, as possible. She was the guest speaker at Doctors Hospital STEM program Saturday. Bo also shared with the group that she will be heading to space in the coming months and ensuring to take a piece of the Bahamas with her. I will become the seventh black woman to go into space. And while I'm excited about it, it's not enough. We need everyone in the room to see a role for themselves if they want it in space. My focus is how can I not only encourage that, but actually put together support to empower that goal and that dream. 
The plan is to have a spacesuit that has the Bahamian flag that's going to live here in the Bahamas. Bo also designed the Lingo Kit, which is a self-paced coding kit while in the Bahamas to teach STEM subjects. It's something she's hoping will spark greater global interest in STEM. For Doctors Hospital President and CEO Dr. Charles Degas, he says the program demonstrates for students what's available in the field of STEM. It was fundamental for us to invest in high school students, and we use the vehicle of STEM uh, to do that. Um, having Aisha here today, as you appreciate, is phenomenal. It's allowing the students to see what their journey uh, to their future could look like, what kind of sacrifices they may need to make. As for what students learn over the course of the year? We talk about STEM careers, we talk about STEM innovation, we talk about STEM movements in society and then this year our particular focus is trying to bring STEM into the Bahamas. St. Andrews International School head boy and 2023 Bridge graduate Shannon Fox views this experience as transformative. Bridge really wants you to think about that creativity, that innovation that's really important in this STEM field. Um, we get to think about getting outside the box and finding novel solutions. It's been my experience that understanding STEM broadens your perspectives and you get to understand what is available to you. Minister of Education, Technical and Vocational Training, the Honorable Glennis Anna Martin, is appealing to parents to ensure their students take advantage of tutoring for the upcoming national examination that she says is available at no cost on school campuses. With just weeks left before exams start, she wants to set students up for success. Some are during the lunchtime, some are after, um, after school. They're free and they're helping to prepare um, the children. So please support your, your children and encourage them to attend these sessions so they have the best chance at high performance in the national examinations. The Minister of Education says the ministry is also planning to make tutoring even more accessible for students. We're going to very shortly um, broaden the virtual school to assist um, the tutoring uh, so you can stay home and go online and, and get the tutoring at home. So, we, But we just wanted to activate it, state for all of those students who are doing BJC or BGCSE for the students to um, settle down, start focusing and preparing, and parents to support uh, the students for these examinations. Don't get anxious. Uh, take it one day at a time and just in, in, and take, keep a pace. Don't, don't be overwhelmed by anything and do your best. In case you missed the news or want to stay ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. Church of God of Prophecy will embark in Conclave 2024 under the theme Go Forward from March 13 through 17. This gathering of the saints will begin on Wednesday night with the charge to the nation by Bishop Dr. Franklin Ferguson. On Friday night, there will be a sacred service of ordination for six candidates for the bishopric. At 2 p.m. on Sunday, March 17, there will be a baptismal parade and Bishop Tim Polta, the presiding Bishop will preach in the final service of Conclave 2024. It's going to be a grand celebration. Come expecting miracles. See you at Conclave 2024. Here at Immigration Care Service, you can trust us, especially if you have experienced issues or problems with the U.S. immigration at the borders. We'll do our best to provide options and solutions to immigration roadblocks so travelers can continue visiting the U.S.
and residents can continue living their lives in the U.S. without worries. The best part? Our services are affordable and accessible. Take the mystery, confusion, and fear out of your immigration concerns. Contact Immigration Care Service today. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to your Saturday sports, everyone. I'm Ahmed Jal and Old Stopping Sports. The B3A's 2024 Christmas Trials getting underway yesterday at the Old Thomas Robinson Stadium. We saw the finals of the 100 meters, 400 meters, and 1500 meters. Several athletes qualifying in field events. Kiazra Thomas and the girls under 17 high jump with a leap of 1.66 meters. She also qualify in the girls 400 meters. Terrell McCoy throwing 14.48 to take the girls under 17 shot put and surpass the career rift the qualifying standard bailey major with a leap of 12.34 meters in the girls under 20 triple jump achieving the carifta standard as well good i just want to thank god for allowing me to qualify once again and to do well and i have i just hope that when i do go to carifta i do exceedingly well and make my country proud coming into the event i didn't qualify i was a bit nervous but i just remembered my training and i went into it thinking of each movement in the triple jump and I just had fun. I'm really proud of what I did today. It's taken a long time to get where I've gotten. It's my last year U17. I've thrown 13 and 12s, but today I threw 14.43 meters, and I'm very proud of myself. Um, I've exceeded my standards, and I only plan to go higher for Carifta. Still on Carifta qualifiers last weekend, Sachs URA Scott would break the BAISS and under-18 javelin record with a toss of 49.83 meters. The throw currently has Scott ranked at number four in the world. We caught up with her on the feet as well as her expectations for this year's Perth Games. At least I'm really grateful, you know, that God allowed me to push through and not have any injuries. Well, leading up to it, I'm going to stay focused and keep working hard. And hopefully I could come on top this year and get a whole new bigger PB. And with two empty roster spots, it's official. The Philadelphia 76ers will sign Kai Jones to a 10-day contract. This according to Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN. The Hornets waived the 23-year-old earlier this season after a string of odd social media posts, including some that criticized teammates and the Hornets organization. He did not participate in training camp because of personal reasons. He has not played a game this season. Because of the circumstances surrounding his release, Jones was not able to find a new home until now. Kai also recently suited up for the Bahamas in the most recent window of the America Cup qualifiers. In college basketball news, the Wisconsin Badgers moving on in the Big Ten tournament thanks in large to a stellar performance from Bahamian Hooper A.J. Store as he would score 30 points to lead Wisconsin over Northwestern 70-61. to Without point guard Chucky Hepburn, Store was dazzling. The sophomore was 7 for 11 from the field adding five rebounds and four assists. The Badgers facing Purdue later this evening in the semifinals. And that's when we look at your sports on this Saturday. A check on weather when we return. This is ZNS Total Sports. Hello everyone, this is Tony Williams, back with a special promotion from BahamasAir.com and GoGo Florida. The $100 deposit is back, but it's only on your debit card. So whether you're renting that sedan, SUV, or spacious minivan for group or family trips, keep your cash in your pocket. Only Dollar Thrifty is making it convenient for you. Your $100 deposit held on your debit card. Available at Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, and Orlando. Book your eight-passenger minivan for Easter and save.
For more than 30 years, the Bahamas Bridal Show has prepared thousands of brides and grooms for the walk down the aisles. On Sunday, April 7th, that tradition continues when the Grand Ballroom at Bahama is transformed into the ultimate wedding experience. Featuring a fashion show by Buttons Bridal and Formal Wear, $30,000 in prizes, savings on wedding expenses, and the most wonderful displays you'll ever see. Tickets, $60. Call 327-8896 or visit BahamasEvents.net for details. You watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? Adlan, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, let us financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how, together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. ESE Distributors, the number one wholesale beauty supply in the Bahamas. Specializing in hair products, accessories, and makeup. A variety of skin lightening products. Caratone, Natural Bright, Pawpaw, and personal toiletries. Like soaps, creams, lotion, and oils. Hair products, like Got To Be, Red One, and everything in the Morphos line. And lots of hair. Afro Kinky, 3X Ghana, Crochet Hair. We deliver and ship to the Family Islands. ESE Distributors, located on Soldier Road, opposite NCA. Have you ever purchased a defective item and was denied an exchange or cash refund? Contact the Consumer Protection Commission at 393-7795-8 or our 24-hour complaints hotline at 357-7898 and let us help your voice be heard. It's time now for a check on tonight's weather forecast. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean joins us in studio with the latest temperatures. Good evening, Basil. Oh, good evening, uh, Germanita. We have partly cloudy skies, temperature a warm 80 degrees, a relative humidity at 67%. The winds out of the southeast at 9 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,015.0 millibars. That is 29.97 inches. And your temperatures around the Fambi Islands this evening, 81 degrees in Marshall, Babaco, Green Tool Key, and in Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands at 80 degrees, Alassane Bemini, 78 degrees, 81 in Harbor Island, Roxanne Elutra, 82 degrees, fresh Creek Central Andros at 80, picking up 82 in Rockside, Elutra, and Otterstown, Canal, with Black Point, Exuma, and Kemp's Base on Andros reporting 81 degrees. 81's also in San Salvador and in Rome Key, Georgetown, Exuma, one degree up at 82 degrees, and pick up some more 82's in Ragged Island. Cloud, Stanley Island, and Crooked Island. Betsy Bay, Maguana, 83. Acklands, 83. Matchetown, and Agua at 81. Texas, Cacus Islands, 81 degrees. Your body forecast tonight through tomorrow. For the northwestern parts of our country, the winds are going to be out of the south at 10 to 15 knots. The wave heights 2 to 4 feet. Low tide takes place at 748 this evening. Another low tide at 857 tomorrow morning. For the central Bahamas through Sunday, southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. The wave heights 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the southeast Bahamas, we're going to have a little stronger winds there. Easterly at 12 to 18 knots. The wave heights 3 to 6 feet over the ocean. So we're asking boaters in the southeast Bahamas to exercise some caution through Sunday. And our forecast map showing a stationary front boundary across the southern United States, but that will get moving in another day or so. Pushing towards the south, we'll move through the northwest Bahamas late Monday night, heading into Tuesday morning, and we'll see a nice little cool down there after. Satellite pictures are showing some high-level clouds uh, moving over the extreme northwestern parts of our country. Elsewhere, high pressure remains in control. And our forecast for tonight simply calls for partly cloudy, mild conditions, 70 degrees for the low. Tomorrow, partly sunny and beautiful weather conditions with a high temperature 
of 82 degrees. And your seven-day forecast are looking like this. Beautiful forecast right through Monday, but come Monday night, that is when that front will go through. And you'll see we leave those 80s behind come Tuesday with temperatures back in the upper 70s during the daytime. And we will visit some uh, mid-60s as of Tuesday. So it looks as though some nice cool days shaving up ahead of us next week. Jimmy Nita. Thanks, Basil. The final night of activity for this year's Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival getting underway in just a short while. And if this final night is anything like last night, then festival goers are in for quite a treat. Our Koval Pifram is joining us from the festival site in Georgetown, Exuma, with more. Good evening, Corbell. Hi there, Jiminita. Well, it is the final day of the 18th annual Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival here in beautiful Georgetown, Exuma. And to say that we've had a lot of fun is simply an understatement. But night two promises to be, well, perhaps even more exciting. We want to tell you a bit about what's happening because we've still got a couple of more hours before we get uh, night two of action underway. There's competition happening. It's all about, about the students. That's taking place right now. There's a culinary uh, challenge. We have kids from a number of schools here on the island taking part in that competition. And uh, tomorrow night, we'll be bringing you the highlights from that competition. But let's talk about, like, last, last night, as I said to you, you know what? I mean, really, I, I, I'm still at a loss for words at how great it was. Let's look at some highlights. Yes, E is for Exuma, the Emerald Island, but there's only one word that describes night one of the 18th Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival here at Georgetown Exuma. Can you say electrify? Scores piled into the regatta site, the home of this festival, ready for a grand style party. Not long into it, before Island MP, Deputy Prime Minister and Tourism Minister Chester Cooper called it a smashing success. And that's what excites me. I love Exuma. I love sharing Exuma, and I am excited about this 18th Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival. No arguments about that from the festival goers either. I love it! I love it! And what do you think about Exuma, the island of Exuma? It's so beautiful here. I'm literally upset. I want to live here. Well, we came here to fish. We love the fishing, and we ended up at this awesome music festival, so really, I got nothing to complain about. I love it. We have to remember where we come from, so it's our heritage. I love our Bahamian music. Oh, yeah, that is just a snapshot of what night one of the Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival here in Georgetown. Exuma was like last night, Jimenita. You know, I've been asking organizers, what do you do for an encore? How do you top what we saw last night? And their answer to me was, well, silly, you make it bigger. So we are in for another incredible night. We left here at about 3 o'clock this morning, so, whoo. Who knows? That's the very latest for now here from the Bahamian Music and Heritage Festival in Georgetown, Exuma. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Corval Pye. From back to you, Jimenita. Thanks, Corval. Looks like a lot of fun there. But before we go, a special belated happy birthday to Joshua Cartwright and Kennedy Morley, who celebrated yesterday. I hope you both enjoyed your special day. And that will end the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. We thank you for continuing to make ZNS your number one news and information network as only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team, thanks for watching and good night.